Greetings, explorers of the old world. You restorers of the old world. This is a bird's eye view of Atlanta, Georgia in 1892, at a time when there were said to have been about 70,000 citizens living here. Even in this drawing, which I always suggest has been altered from what it may realistically have looked like at the time, you get a sense of the age and depth of civilization already established in this location. And as we pan out, we see the undeveloped lands that surround the core here, and you wonder why did they feel the need to build five stories, six stories into the air when they had all this land they could have sprawled outward onto. I'll tell you why. We are looking at the remains of a previous civilization. We have a large file for you in this video. I want you to sit back, relax, get comfortable, and join me as we look into Old World Atlanta. Atlanta, Georgia. And what would you expect of a video like this? What do you think Atlanta has to offer in the old world? Or from the old world? A quick look at the population demographics. Modern day we're at about half a million. 1900 are benchmark in these explorations. Uh, looking at just about 90,000 people and the census beginning in 1850. So you can see the growth pattern through here. It's not a large city and most of what we're looking at coming from this time frame where there were let's say about 100,000 people give or take. And as I look at a street scene like this I'm taken more to uh, metropolitan centers, places like Chicago, New York, my mind goes to those places, not to a place like Atlanta. It doesn't really have the, the boom of population to explain um, such a built out uh, city for the time. You can see here there's streetcars in full effect here. Uh, railway is a large part. Actually, it was the railways that apparently are responsible for Atlanta becoming the city that it was. And we get a real um, ugly narrative coming out of Atlanta through this civil war. Uh, Sherman's March, um, basically, and I, I've just been introduced to this whole concept, but General William Tecumseh Sherman, which I found to be a very interesting name uh, if you relate it to Tecumseh's Comet. Napoleon's Comet in the early 1800s. There's an interesting tie in there with the, the terminology. But we have a narrative of the, this city being torched, basically, um, with not much left of it after Sherman leaves Atlanta on his march to Savannah. I, some ridiculousness in that narrative. They're saying that uh, Sherman destroyed the railroad, heated up the rail ties, or the railway lines so much, and wrapped them around trees. Absolutely absurd part of the narrative. If well, you look here at a 1905 photograph, we're, we're getting visual evidence of what we consider to be the mud flood or some sort of cataclysmic event that affected different regions in different ways. We are seeing openings underground. This looks to be an excavation. 
So I would say that's a smoking gun visual for any of those in the mud flood community. And we do get an early narrative photograph, Civil War era photograph here, 1961 to 65 in that time frame. And we're still seeing at that early time frame when the population was supposed to have been less than 10,000 people. We're still seeing these multi-story brick buildings. We're still seeing the um, intact sidewalks here. So even though they attempt to paint these old photos as a very uh, somewhat primitive town, you're still seeing um, shades of the old world. And then you, you see all the all, all sorts of buildings like this. This is be the Atlanta University. At about 25,000 people living there, and we have structures like this. Very difficult structure to build even in our modern times. Could find no other evidence of this place. Tabernacle and auditorium. And yet another tabernacle. You see the brick streets in the foreground. Very built out. A cyclorama. Very much Greco Roman. Whatever you want to call that, whatever label you want to put it on. Or put on it. And an almost fictional depiction here of old Atlanta. The commercial center they're calling it here with the uh, train station in the middle and all these trains meeting here. So if we think of the all the rail lines as, as a part of that old world infrastructure, Atlanta most certainly had to have been a hub. Another very early hazy grainy photograph but you're still getting multi-story brick buildings at a supposed time frame where there's less than 2,000 people. the train station again in a very early time period about 30,000 people they're not even hiding it here we have about 30,000 people living here you've got one two three four five six story building come on really why on earth what's going on down there that you have to have buildings like this at that time period I'll tell you what what I think you know what I think we are looking at the remains of, of the previous civil, civilization, the previous humanity that once existed here. And then as a result of a massive cataclysm, possibly an attempt at digging out after the cataclysm and rebuilding, and a systematic destruction of the remains of that previous civilization. And that, I think, is what we're looking at when we when we hear these stories of the Civil War and Napoleonic War, all of these things is just a way of erasing the memory of the past, of, of what we are and what we were and what we will be again. This is the Briarcliff Mansion. Multi-story bank. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Is that the same story there? Does that make sense to build a bank in such a manner? In such an early time period? Of course you have to do that to all sorts of buildings. This is the Candler building. There it is again. From the back end and we're going to see some of the splendor of what we're really dealing with with such a building. This building still stands. And if you look at that entryway, and you're not scratching your head and questioning the narrative. I don't know. This reminds me of something from Berlin, or Leipzig. You see all sorts of old black and white photographs of this type of statue work that were obliterated during World War II. 
We have this though in Atlanta, Georgia. There's a good look at the statue and the front entry there. And the interior not to be outdone by the exterior. What do we call this? This is a lion with wings. Is that a griffin? Who came up with that idea to put a griffin there as the new post at the bottom of the stairs? At, about, at the bottom of the marble stairs? Who did all the detailing here of this marble slab? I know you you upholders of the narrative can, can maybe find, if you're out there, maybe you can find the receipts for that in those uh, in the local archives. Maybe you can find the receipts for for this right here. How much that that single piece cost. If they have this all on record, it should just be a matter of investigation. Here we have the old state capital. Before we get into the new state capital. This one quite ridiculous. We saw this in the bird's eye view. And we have a timeline here as it comes into being. We get all this long-winded information and we get uh, the humming and hawing and the architecting and the funding and then all we get is work completed in March 1889. That's all we get. We don't get any start dates of construction or anything that went on. It's just work completed. So something seems to have been left out of the story. And of course we know why because as we look at a building like this we know it's much, much older than 130 years old. And really impossible for them to have built this uh, according to the narrative we've been given for that period of time. At that period of time, too, of the early 1890s, uh, apparently there was a major recession or depression that struck financially. I'm just beginning to hear about that now. But I find that interesting because so many of these buildings that we research in this old world uh, community seem to have sprung up in that 1880s, 1890s time period. So something is amiss there as well. And I really want you to take a look at this one. This is the Oglethorpe University. Take a look at the structures here. I know I couldn't find anything really better than this that shows it all in this orientation. You can see the tower here. Could not find anything on that other than this postcard or this structure here. A quick search on the Oglethorpe University will yield some photographs of some of the structures here. So we do get a sense of the, the true age of these buildings, but some of the splendor that we're seeing in the postcard is either completely hidden on a search or is gone. I suspect it's gone. Postcard from 1907 looking very much like a large city fully lit up. About a hundred thousand people here at the time maybe a little bit more we are told. Are you in a city of a hundred thousand people? Do you have that concentration of uh, development like we're seeing here? Of course not. It doesn't make sense. The federal prison. Very interesting to the narrative in Atlanta, the train lines and the roads built over top of the train lines. It's very uh, unique. sense of detail here. Absolutely absurd to get all these obscure buildings. This one is the Agnes Scott College with this ridiculous ornamentation. I should also mention if you're from the area 
or have lived in the area or know anything about the area, um, throw it in the comment section below. You know, getting all, I'm getting all sorts of interesting stories from viewers, unique experiences that they've had in some of the cities when I do these videos. So I certainly appreciate your input and enjoy um, whenever that happens. So I don't know I, about the American Civil War. I, I really am starting to think that we have a, a cover story for the cleanup operation of the uh, destruction of the old world. I think they had to do America, North America. They had to wipe that slate clean and uh, um, then they used that to destroy much of Europe that they needed to do away with. This is all speculation, of course. This is just me sort of peering into time as I see it, peering back into time. Of course, I do apologize uh, if I offend your sensibilities. Some of you are Civil War historians, but I suggest that uh, there's a good chance you've been uh, sold a bill of goods on much of uh, what they've told you about uh, that time period, just like much of the past. I think you could you can throw the World Wars in that uh, camp as well and um, pretty much everything that's gone on. I saw a recent comment on, on the channel where uh, it was a student of history and he said, he or she said, I can't remember, um, their uh, their task in, in school was to go through the old newspapers to determine what happened back in time. And um, in modern day we have really been shown how trustworthy uh, newspaper sources can be and I think we can go back in time with that as well I think uh, a lot of the early newspaper moguls we have a Hearst name in there don't we we have that robber baron um, narrative creeping up in our um, sources of media we have radio really coming in and getting a grip taking a grip on the, on the people but newspapers down through time is something that gets looked back at and as time seems to progress um, we have to speculate more and more so we end up trusting those sources wholeheartedly because that's what survives down through time and here we are today so in this field of research we're questioning those sources we are not trusting those experts and we are using our eyes and we are not letting our eyes deceive us and we are coming to conclusions other than the ones we've been given. Now here we are getting a look at the Constitution building and this is what it's come to today. There's no attempt at preservation. It's really like you've seen some of the universities that do preserve these buildings. They are able to be uh, kept up. There seems to be an intentional um, degradation involved, almost a ritual ritualistic I would suggest, in the destruction of these old world structures. They eventually get leveled and turned into parking lots or a, a modern day office building. Brutalist architecture. And then we get these absurd stories of buildings like this a courthouse that lasted from 1881 to 1908 making no sense whatsoever you have a very obscure Cox College with a mansard style almost a dome or a squishamid as, as I've termed it uh, with uh, my friend Frankie from New West Reset the squishamid four-sided dome sure there's a technical term somebody can give me in the comments but it all starts to look very familiar all the hallmarks of a, of a previous civilization and inheriting going on here of course we have an opera house with the brick paved streets faded into obscurity a shot of the interior of the opera house take a look at the detailing here on these booths wow 
really, really magnificent. I wonder who they'll say the uh, got the contract to build that. You historians, you can go dig that up for us. 1895, this photo is supposedly taken from. And we have about 70 to 80,000 people supposedly uh, in this time period. 1895, also the year of one of the major cotton exhibitions, which we're going to get into. But we have this, at the time, brand new building, the Capitol building, looking like it's been there a, a long time. And I am starting to think a lot more about many of these rectangular flat roof structures that we see and how much of those were taken down, decapitated, and what did the tops of them really look like. I suspect many of these were once much more glorious in the upper regions and have been scaled back and flattened off. I've seen too much evidence of alteration and uh, um, the getting rid of what we call antiquitech and that ornate detailing on the upper areas of these buildings. So I'm really beginning to suspect much more of that has gone on than we even appreciate in this community possibly. Of course we have to have a cathedral. Here we have the entrance to the Oglethorpe Park. This was used in the 1881 cotton exhibition. There'll be a few visuals from there as well. The park, supposedly. Of course, I keep saying supposedly. Because we really can't trust much of it, can we? The Equitable Building. Looking pretty magnificent, but as we even look closer, we start to see how spectacular those de detailings are. And why? why? Why was it so important to adorn the upper regions of these structures in such a manner? Questions that we, we have to ask. Now we get to the Expo Cotton Expo from 1895, giving us a bit of a taste of those the splendor that we see in the World's Fairs and so many other places. There is a uh, Ferris wheel right there. And you get a sense of the structures that no doubt they will say we're temporary, but these fairs only lasted several months. It's absolutely ridiculous to suggest such a thing. So the, the resetting of the realm, uh, these fairs I think are attached to it. The resetting, the kickstarting of industry, new industries, uh, repurposed industries, distorted old industries made to work again through through different means. So we're getting that taste of the old world and of course the setting of the narrative here we see they'll tell us what the continent was like in the past and we believe them and we'll believe them that all of these structures that we're seeing were all hastily built in the last 150 years. Will we believe them? Or will we look at something like this and begin to understand? Maybe we are standing in the old Atlantis. I know Sir Francis Bacon, if you're familiar with him, Supposedly, the one who wrote Shakespeare's uh, work also wrote a book called Atlantis Rising, or The New Atlantis, and it was in regard to America. So I think there's an interesting tie in there. They're trying to tell us something. I think it was very, very important for them to erase the old world on this continent. And it remains very important for them that we don't remember. This is from the 1881 Cotton Exposition. This structure here, 1881, uh, 40,000 people living in Atlanta at the time, but they were able to build such structures. Here's 
here we have the 1895 postmark on there and the Hotel Aragon and just like a city rising from the ashes we look at a coin from the exposition and what looks like a phoenix rising from the ashes is this a reference to Sherman and the torching of Atlanta or is this a reference of the torching of the old world and the rising of the new shrouded in symbolism all these symbols having all di different meanings so many of them difficult for us to decipher but it's all there it's in our faces and I think our trust has been abused this is from the 1881 cotton exposition just notice the short time frame October 5th to December 31st you saw that structure ridiculous all right we have the Fox Theater and Shrine Mosque here uh, not the only Fox Theater many Fox Theaters throughout the states St. Louis has a spectacular one San Francisco had an amazing one that was torn down in the 60s here's the inside of the Fox Theater check out the columns arches all we're really told is that it opened in 1929 that's the same year the San Francisco and I suspect more of Fox Theaters being popping into our existence in 1929 absolutely ridiculous who who was involved in this build is that an elephant up there in Atlanta come on people can you see it another view of the shrine Fox theater really 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 amazing hmm. Fulton County Jail had a tower over time the tower began to degrade this one from the 30s Georgia Tech University old building here here we also have a photo of Georgia Tech University what is the difference what do you what are we seeing here is this looks like a photo am I, am I wrong is this is this a drawing depiction or is, do you think this is some sort of photo let me know what you think there's a, there's a major discrepancy between the two of these worth highlighting and again we look at the campus of Georgia School of Technology Georgia Tech and you can see all the buildings and the columns and you have to ask yourself how could they have built such infrastructure in these short periods of time and they don't give us enough detail and we're just expected to believe them we have a high school just for girls that's the G girls high school looking like a mosque I suppose somewhat because that was easy to do at the time turn of the century of course no shortage of mansions we don't really get into them too much in my videos but they are everywhere they all have their millionaires row or bankers row all of these places so so many secrets that lie beneath the surface so many secrets where's the star pointing is it an inversion the flat iron building they call this one English American building poor horse and cart no doubt hauling all sorts of stone and brick the Henry Grady statue and mr. Henry Woodfin Grady 
American journalists and orator helped reintegrate the states of the Confederacy into the Union. Well, thank you. Reintegration. Hailed as heroes, you have to remember they invert everything. All of this, I believe, has been flipped on its head. And this gentleman, a part of the media, of course, the setting of the narrative. And uh, immortalized as a hero. Henry Grady. There's a hospital named after him. Okay, the Hotel Dinkler Ansley. Quite a large structure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, somewhere 14 stories, something like that. Here's a little look at the interior. Looking like a bank, really, here. You have these stone columns, ornate gold work. You can still see it, even though it's a postcard, a bit faded. It looks like a dining area that's about, what, 35 feet ceilings. Of course, you need to have ceilings at that height. The Aragon Hotel. Interesting here. Have a bit of a ramp, it looks like. We're going down into the ground. If we look a little closer here as it gets grainy, we see windows below ground level. Bellevue Hotel. Shortly before it burned to the ground in 1912. I'm glad we have a sketch, at least. We have a Biltmore Hotel. These ones pop up everywhere, the Biltmore. Usually ghost stories attached to them. And you can even see a bit of the uh, slant going on here. The front face of the building, I would suggest, is here. Uh, sloping down the hill so you get the lower story on this side but you don't see it up here. Some shots of the interior of the Biltmore in modern day. Arches. Very complicated work here. Very, very complicated and ornate as well. Not many places these, these days have any detailing whatsoever on the ceilings. The logistics of it make it very, very difficult to justify. And so you just don't see it in new builds. The Georgian Terrace Hotel. My guess is a dome used to be here. There's Henry Grady's name popping up again. Maybe even a sellout from what I can see. Yet another hotel, very obscure, very odd looking. This is a school as well. Many schools, many of these buildings have been repurposed and, and uh, all sorts of different designations of schools have been uh, attributed to them. All right, the Hurt Building. Yeah, we're given a, a long period of time on this one. Construction, 1913 to 1926, so 13 year, years of construction, although they do say most of the main structure was up in that first year. Problem is, no construction photos. I mean, you had 13 years, guys, to snap a pic. Come on. Nothing. They give us nothing. You'd think that you'd want to take a picture of something like this as it's being constructed. Look at the detail. Look at the, all the way down at the top. Look at this. A little bit grainy. I sure wish it was a little bit more detailed. You can see the lion's heads here. And this just continuing all the way down the soffit line. The cornice. And now we look at the interior. And yeah curved marble handrail. Really, really something. Anyone out there that works with stone? Because I know there's tradesmen that are checking out these uh, videos and beginning to ask the questions 
and recognizing how difficult, how monumental these achievements would have been to construct something like this. And we, we really do have to go to the people that do the work. Just like we, uh, just like the historical narrative only really attributes the architect, we need to, uh, we need more sources. We need the people that do this kind of work to chime in as to what they think. Well, here we have the uh, octagonal pattern that so often repeats itself in the underside of domes and arches. Uh, a, a part of that uh, energetic uh, harnessing of the ether system of the old world. Here we have the classic column and this symbolic shape here too often with nothing on that part. You have to wonder if that was some sort of resonate or some sort of collector of energy, the shape here. And we go back to an earlier cotton exhibition as well. So it's almost like they were recycling the narrative um, for us over time in Atlanta as well. Like they're almost pull starting the motor, taking a few pulls before it really gets going. And I hope I hope I've shown you enough visual evidence um, to to make you question this narrative. We're looking at a location that had about a hundred thousand people, but all of these structures were built or in existence in that time period. Really making no sense. And then you see structures like this, and these look ancient. Honestly, this is looking like something that could be could have been built 500 years ago in um, Rotterdam or um, Prague or something like that. You know, it's just uh, doesn't fit. Doesn't fit the narrative at all. There it is again, and you can actually see the elevated roadway here. Some more building would be go going down below. And you see the detail up here as well, looking like the Hurt building. I might be wrong on that. This is the law building. I couldn't actually find a picture of the building, but I did find a picture of the front entry. And I thought it was worth putting in the slideshow. The Markham House, dating way back into the time period, back into the 1870s, 80s. Here we have a rendering of it. So very large structure, multi-storied structure from the 1870s. Why? Why are you building in such a manner? Why the detail? There's no, again, at that early time period, you're just, you're just getting a community of people together and we're to believe that you're building everything with such detailed ornamentation, uh, leaving no corner left unfinished. The, there's no logic in it. There's no logic in it. Massive holes. There are massive holes in this narrative. And these visuals, I think, are helping to spark our memory. Um, that by by triggering that uh, that logic in our minds, where we look at this and we say, "This doesn't make any sense." The Masonic Temple. Enough said. The Morris Brown College, definitely brick streets. Of course, the Carnegie Library. I like how we have Virgil and Dante, the classics, and then we have Carnegie over the front entry, immortalizing himself. All we need is another 50 years of, of uh, time, and people will be. Um, praising Carnegie as a spectacular author of fiction or something silly. I honestly believe that that's, time can distort so much and that's how some of these figures get uh, immortalized over time just by the forgetting. A few more visuals of that Oglethorpe University you saw. If anyone knows anything about that as well please um, if you have any if you know of any places where there's more visuals or some of those old those structures uh, get that in the comments as well. I'd love to see more of the Ogles Oglethorpe University. If you have any stories attached to that. All old stonework with the tech here on each 
crenellation, crenellated tower, let's say. They're, they're saying this is an old state capital, but if that is, then that's the third. So I don't know. We do have an old city hall. Well, quite comical too. This is obviously an early photograph. And what are we looking at here? Outbuildings with little chimneys is out that is. So we have these little guys here. And then we have the old city hall back there. Hmm. And these are what, what they pass off as sort of conventional historical photographs from early Atlanta. But even these photos can't hide everything. You definitely see the brickwork going on. You can see the evidence of the mud flood coming down here. Uh, and then you have the detailed brickwork here and here. So you, they really can't hide it back here. You're getting that Greco-Roman styling. All the hallmarks of the old world. Bit of a strange part of the narrative with the region here as well. The old stone mountain having this carving in the side of the uh, cliff. Very odd shaped uh, mountain though. Looking with all the streaked lines looking like something that has been fried and melted and turned into a bit of a blob. And another early time period. Look at the early time period. Three stories. Three stories. Or ornamentation. Archways. You can see it here. If we look close, you can see the arches. Not practical whatsoever for a city of 25,000 people. Not making sense whatsoever. These carts look, these wheels look so frail. They don't look like they carry much at all. This, I like this photograph too as we see these streetcars and sort of the fading. But well built, really well built out. Early time period, very well built out. 100,000 people at that time period. Early post office later became the city hall, we're being told. There's another look at it. Arches. One, two, three. Two towers. Old world. And I, like we said earlier, a hub, hub for rail transportation. Atlanta, Georgia. Old world hub. Here's the Sacred Heart Cathedral. These things pop up everywhere. They recycle the names as well. You'll notice the Sacred Heart, and you'll notice the uh, Immaculate Conception, and the St. Peter's, and St. Paul's, and St. Joseph's, St. Jehoshaphat's. They keep repeating the same thing over and over. This is the 20s time period. We're, we're supposed to have been about 20, 200,000 people living in Atlanta, and we have multiple multiple um, 10 plus story buildings here in the 20s. A few more churches for you. We're getting close to the end of the file. I'm bringing you everything I have on the region here. Federal prison, we saw it once already. This would be a photograph again from the Cotton Ex Expo, the Southern Railway Building they're calling this here interesting. You get the column work, you get the obelisk in the foreground. Some statue work going on up here. Are we to believe that this is all temporary? Or this is all destroyed? This is evidence and the remains of the old world civilization that didn't make it. There's a good shot at the stone mountain for you. Nothing natural about this whatsoever. To my eye. Let's check out the age of the stonework here. 
and then the statues on the poles. Making very little sense. Really. Something out of the old world, because it is the old world. It's all the old world. This is the terminal station. And this one torn down with the uh, other station we saw earlier on in the presentation. And this is what it looked like later on in the narrative. And I'll go back. So we're looking at it. Snip, 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 and hip, hip, hip roof. They actually kept these domes. But they took all this ornamentation off. Of course they did. Scaled it right back. There it is again. Why? Why does that happen? They'll tell you it was a problem having to do with wind, that it was falling apart and it had to be done. Absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous. There's the Grady Hospital again. I think we've seen this from another angle. I try not to double them up, but it is sometimes nice to get it from a different angle. And get a sense here again of the old world. And there's the other station, the Union Station. Yet again, very early on, look at the glasswork, reminding me of something we've seen of some of the old world's, world's fairs. The iron and glass structures. And these, these were torn down, this one and the other train station in the 60s or 70s. We're going to wrap up this exploration with this photograph here from 1895 giving us a really nice view of the weathering on the streets and the rail lines and the dome in the background, just of giving us a taste of the shadow of the old world and the implementation of the new world to come and the confusion really with the citizenry and um, the devastation that really that went on. And in this case, in Atlanta, tied right in there with the Civil War and the resetting of a population. So I hope you enjoyed this exploration. Um, like I said, put your comments down below, adding to the story. I always appreciate that, and so do the viewers. And I'll talk to you next time.